Good afternoon and welcome to St. Bernadette's Catholic Church. May we all stand and join us in singing our opening song, The Summons. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening all. We thank God for giving us another opportunity to be in his presence today, the 22nd Sunday ordinary time. We continue to pray for his mercy, for his blessings upon us and healing. And may our coming to his presence today bring joy and gladness and healing upon us. We are all sinners, always praying for his forgiveness. Let us pray. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have read and seen in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Katie and soul. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ Jesus, Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Jesus Christ, only begotten 
Let us pray. God of mighty, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O oh Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day i say to myself i will not mention him i will speak in his name no more but then it becomes like fire burning in my heart imprisoned in my bones i grow weary holding it in i cannot endure it the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh Lord, thirsting for you, my God. My soul Sing your 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not condemn yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Hallelujah. 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 Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whomsoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 
What profit would there be for one to gain the entire world and yet forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? The Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to their conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Audiovisual people, if I came too far forward, let me know. So, we're celebrating Labor Day, a very American holiday. Nobody else has a Labor Day, but we're selling one. And I thought it might be beneficial for us to take a step back for a moment and consider what Scripture has to say about the rhythm of work, and rest. In other words, that kind of cyclical configuration by which all the events of our lives occur. Learning a theology of work and rest is one of the greatest challenges of our day. Bear in mind the term workaholic didn't come about until the 20th century and late in the 20th century. So this whole theology of work and rest is something very new to church. Many of us have adult, uh, and myself included, have adopted very faulty views of what work is, and therefore faulty views of what rest should be. We're commanded to do all the work that needs to be accomplished every week in six days. And leading up to that one glorious day of rest. And then we're commanded to rest. This rhythm of work and rest is both a creational and what I would call a new creational. And when we hear the word new creational, we're talking about something which is redemptive. New creation is to become, a new creation is to be redeemed. It's redemptive. So when we talk about that, that's what we're trying to say. And we need to be redeemed each week from our work. God commanded his people to rest one day in seven because he rested from his work of creation because he redeemed them from the hand of their enemies. In short, we need to work hard at learning to work. And we need to learn to work hard at learning to cease from our labors by resting in that finished work of Christ. Let me say that again. In short, we need to learn to work hard at learning to work. And we need to learn to work hard at learning to cease from our labors by resting in the finished work of Christ. Now, work is obviously one of the most important aspects of creation. God uses six days up, doesn't he, creating the world. Before the fall, we're told work was pleasant. God charged Adam with the task of taking care of the garden, um, turning the whole world, actually, into the garden. That was his man's original job, to work and live in a garden. That, that's recreation for many of us. And Adam embraced the camp, the, that command. He cared for the garden. And he did so with a sense of satisfaction and delight. We can see that in the reading. And then sin entered the world. And God cursed the ground. 
and promised our first father, work would now be burdensome. Thorns and thistles made man's labors difficult and unpleasant. I don't know about you, but you probably at your work have some thorns and thistles in the form of co-workers, right? Same thing, just different, different application. I see some of you nodding. Yeah, you're thinking of somebody right now, aren't you? Thorns and thistles made man's labor difficult and unpleasant. Now, man had to eat by what he could raise. He could work to survive. In addition to the burden placed upon man's labors, the fall also brought about this imbalanced and perverted view of work. After the fall, mankind began to work for their own glory. Think about it. Cain built a city and named it after his son. Man turned inward and therefore began to work for all the wrong reasons. We see this today in the way in which we've kind of lost our idea of what a vocation is, what a calling is. Do you know that every one of you is a unique creation of God? God only made one of you. Nobody has your DNA pattern. Nobody has your fingerprint. Nobody has your dental match. Nobody has the same brain scan you have. You are a unique creation of God, made for a specific person, for a specific thing, to do something on this earth. You have a mission that you were created for. You're special. God made you special because he had something for you to do during this time you were on earth. I spent 22 years in private business, climbing the corporate ladder before I found out that I went up the wrong ladder. But that wasn't what I was called to do. And so I'm standing here trying to share that with you. It's one of the most important aspects of our lives. But most people view their job, first and foremost, as a means to an end, a way to get provisions, possessions, and pleasantry, pleasure. Because the idea of a vocation has been lost, now we jump from job to job throughout our lives, if we viewed our work under the rubric of God's calling, we would be more apt to uh, do whatever lawful work God gifted us to do. And we would seek to do it for his glory, not for ours. The garbage man who picks up the trash to better the community and to bear witness to the goodness and greatness of God is fulfilling his vocation, a vocation unto God, unto the Lord. He's fulfilling the mandate from our God to be fruitful for his glory. And that's supposed to be the ultimate goal of all of us, my brothers and sisters, for our labors, to do it for the glorification of God, not just a fruitful retirement. P.S., I'm in it for that too. We know men, women, were created for the express purpose of being employed in labor of various kinds. And no sacrifice is more pleasing to God than when one of us applies themselves diligently to the calling that they were called to do and endeavors to live in such a manner as to contribute to the betterment of the world. Of course, there's the danger of overworking. That's the other dilemma with which we're faced in our own day. And most of us don't know how to stop working. Why is this? Well, there has never been a culture where job security was so bad. Think about it. The company I worked for laid everybody off. There are also times when people at the top of the company and there, there was a time when they only made like 10 to 20 times more than everybody else. Now the people at the top of the companies make 100 to 200 times more than everybody else. 
As a result, these people that make large amounts of money are expected to put in enormous numbers of hours. If you don't, there's a line behind you waiting for that job. Whereas many of us who might be at the bottom often take multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Doesn't matter where you are in the scale. You're overworked. Then, of course, there's technology. You can work anywhere, right? Used to be you had to go to work. You had to go to a physical building. Now, work follows you home. It follows you home. It's connected to your pocket in the idea of a cell phone or a laptop or a tablet. Your job, your work goes anywhere you are. And that's a convenience, but it's also a ball and chain. You just needed to find a way to make a living. But what about relationships, which is what your life is made of? Today, we are the first culture in history in which you define yourself by defining what you want to be and by attaining it. You know that? We're the first generation to ever do that, to be defining ourselves by our job titles. And that's where our significance comes from. There's never been more psychological, social, or emotional pressure on work to be either fulfilling or at least lucrative. There's never been a culture like this one that has lived before today. What this means is we are now more desperately in need of rest than we ever were before. But we have less time than ever to attain it. And emotionally have less ability to rest than ever. How often are we unable to rest simply because we can't quiet our mind. We fill it with screen data, right? How many times have we been told to shut the screen off an hour before we go to bed? Why? Because you're stimulating everything up there. And yet that thing that is most causing that is the one we're addicted to. It's like your brain on cocaine. It applies to our spiritual world as well. Adam was called to work to confirm his righteousness by caring for the garden. If he had obeyed, he had not eaten of the tree of knowledge or of good and evil. He would have entered into everlasting Sabbath rest with God. But that Sabbath day was promised as something better. After the fall, humanity had to learn to trust in Christ alone for salvation. Today, we can't even stand still long enough to catch up to the salvation of the Lord. So God commands his people to cease working on the Lord's day and see the salvation of the Lord in the finished work of Christ. Jesus is our Sabbath rest. The fact that you're here is a good thing. It's a really good thing. Because it means maybe you're getting that rest that you need right at this moment even if my homily puts you to sleep. <laughs> and it says, Then he rested from his work by lying in the tomb, dead on the old covenant Sabbath day, just as he had created the world and looked back over all his work and said, It is good, so too did he carry out the work of redemption, look back over it, and cry out, It is finished. Now, by faith in Christ, we enter into our Sabbath rest. And we do so fully and finally. He says to us, come unto me, and I will give you rest for your souls. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It's, my brothers and sisters, godly to both work and godly to rest. In both the physical and spiritual realm, God has given us the pattern of work and rest. In the physical realm, we need to learn that pattern 
of work and rest. It is a godly thing to do whatever God has called us to do with all our might for him. And it is godly to rest from our work and undergo a physical and spiritual recreation on this vigil of or day of the Lord. And with that, my brothers and sisters, may you have a happy and restful Labor Day. Amen. May we profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate and suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the day and life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray that God may give us the grace that his work in us, his creation of us, may not come to nothing. Let us, with one voice, offer to God the needs of our people who long for hope and healing on earth. Let us ask God for hope in our day. May we enter the mystery of our hearts to discover the Holy Spirit who shows us how to serve, how to love, and how to live God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us ask God for peace in our day. May we seize the love of God to end violence on our streets, to end war and hatred, to end the jailing of the mentally ill, and to end all discrimination at the borders of nations and of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Let us ask God for courage in our day. May we be willing to serve beyond our expertise and to open new doors for people in dark places of mental illness, human trafficking, and sexual abuse. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask God for healing in our day. May we find sufficient health care for our elderly, hope for people who are bedridden, and peace for people who are addicted, addicted to alcohol and drugs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us ask God for a home in heaven. May our loved ones be welcomed with joy in their eternal home. May we on earth grieve knowing that we too shall one day be welcomed home to sh in sheer love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray especially for Deacon and Anona Adams. May they rest in peace and for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
for all of the personal intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts. May these intentions and those entered into our prayer and petition book be received and answered by our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us the grace and the wisdom to have some balance in our lives. May we not live just to walk, but may we walk and also have a life to the glory of your name and for our own joy and satisfaction through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. to hear you. 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your life. Praise the Lord. For our good, the good of all the souls. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrated in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are clear. for these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body to be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Save us, Savior. Save us, Savior. Savior. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. I would the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my spirit.
Nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I tasted and seen of the sweetest of.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Are there any birthdays? Any birthdays? One, two, three, okay. four. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from St. Bernadette. Happy birthday. St. Bernadette, where everybody's 21. Are there any anniversaries? Any anniversaries? Aha. May I ask how many years? 31 years. All right. Amen. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. This weekend, September 2nd and 3rd, we are celebrating Women in Ministry Sunday. It begins with a special celebration at the 10 a.m. Mass tomorrow. Please come and join us. Our special guest speaker will be Dr. Yolanda Brown. I hope you all should know her. I've, she's been around the Archdiocese, does a lot of speaking, longtime friend. Um, and her presentation at Mass will be followed by a wine and cheese reception in the grotto. So even though you're here this evening, you're welcome to come back for, and encouraged to come back for that. Um, the fall session of faith formation begins in September 17th for First Communion. So any of our children that are on the verge of receiving First Communion. And for those seeking the Sacrament of Confirmation, Orientation begins on September 24th, following the 10 o'clock Mass. For more information, please contact the parish office, 323-293-4977. And by the way, so either Confirmation or First Communion. Be an informed parishioner, visit our website, stbernadettela.org, our Facebook page, our Twitter page, or simply pick up a paper copy of our parish bulletin on your way out at the doors. Um, and again, don't forget the special wine and cheese reception tomorrow following the 10 o'clock mass in the grotto. And I was told by a couple of people to also remind you there will still be coffee and donuts available in the hall. So we got everybody covered. With, with that, my brothers and sisters, please stand for the final blessing. Wishing you all an elongated weekend. Yeah, because Monday is a holiday. So, okay. According to the deacon, the office is closed on Monday. So, enjoy yourself. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ray. 